Good morning. Welcome to all who are joining us for worship. This morning's service is full of the joy of Christmas with carols, scriptures, prayer, and a beautiful Christmas story read by Michael and Susan Barber. We hope that our worship together will deepen the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love in your heart. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hear the good news of great joy. Christ is born. Let us worship God. Let us come together in prayer. Holy God, we come this morning in adoration, on bended knees with hopeful hearts, our eyes open wide with wonder and awe. We come to see the baby born in love for us, the one who brings joy in the midst of our grief, light into our darkness, singing even in our mourning, we come this morning to behold him and to feel the warmth and the glory of your presence. Even those of us with weary hearts yearn to join the shepherds who ran to find out if the good news was really true. Even those of us who are certain that there is nothing new under the sun find ourselves wanting to follow in the footsteps of the wise men who took off on a long journey just because they saw a star. Open our hearts today, merciful God, with that power of love that comes to us so vulnerable and so small. Open our hearts that we may joy, join in the awe and the joy of Jesus' birth. And when we rise from our knees, we pray that you will open our eyes. 
that we may recognize your presence in the most ordinary places and among the least likely people. Great God, kindle your love within us in your church that together we may shine your light in our community, that together we might banish the shadows of suffering and want and pain, that together we might set right those things that have gone wrong. May our faithful life together be the continuation of the Christmas miracle as our lives demonstrate that you are present now God with us, now and evermore. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 148. Let us listen for the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all you angels. Praise God, all the host. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God commanded and they were created. God established them forever and ever. God fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth. You sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, 
kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all God's faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to God. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, 
and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The Clown of God, an old story told and illustrated by Tommy DePaula. Many, many years ago in Sorrento, there lived a small boy named Giovanni who had no mother and no father. He dressed in rags and begged his bread and slept in doorways. But he was happy, and he could do something wonderful. He could juggle. Every day, he would go to Senior Baptista's fruit and vegetable stall and juggle. He would juggle lemons and oranges, apples and eggplants, and even zucchini. Crowds would gather to watch, and when Giovanni had finished, they would buy from Senior Baptista. Then Senior Baptista's wife would give Giovanni a bowl of hot soup. It was a very good arrangement. One day, a troop of traveling players came to town, and Giovanni watched as Arlecchino and Calabina in their beautiful clothes danced and sang. Oh, Giovanni said to himself, that is the life for me. So when the play was over, Giovanni went and spoke to the maestro. No, no, said the maestro, I have no need for a ragamuffin. Go beg your bread somewhere else. But I could be very helpful, pleaded Giovanni. I could unpack and pack up. I could take care of the donkey and maestro, added Giovanni. I can juggle. Not bad, said the maestro, watching. With a bit more training and practice. All right, but no money. A place to sleep and companionship of the finest players in Italy and a bowl of noodles, that's all. Grazie, signor, said Giovanni. Go get your things, we leave in an hour, said the maestro. So Giovanni said goodbye to signor and signora Battista and became a traveling player. Not long after, the maestro gave him a costume, and Giovanni juggled for the crowds. He would put on a clown's face, step out from the curtain before the play began, bow, open up a colorful bag, roll out a carpet, and begin. He would juggle sticks, plates. Then he would balance the plates on the sticks and twirl them, he would juggle clubs, rings, and burning torches. Finally, he would toss a red ball and an orange ball, then a yellow ball, a green, a blue, and a violet ball until it looked as if he were juggling the rainbow. And now for the sun in the heavens, he would cry. Still juggling, he would pick up a shining golden ball and toss it higher and higher, faster and faster, and how the crowds would cheer. Giovanni became very famous, and it wasn't long before he said goodbye to the traveling troupe and set off on his own. Up and down Italy he traveled, and although his costume became more beautiful, he always kept the face of a clown. Once he juggled for a duke, once for a prince, and it was always the same. 
First the sticks, then plates, then clubs, rings, and burning torches. Finally, the rainbow of colored balls. And now for the sun and the heavens, he would shout. And the golden ball would fly higher and higher, and the crowds would laugh and clap and cheer. One day, between two towns, Giovanni was sitting in the shade of a tree, eating a lunch of bread and cheese. Two little brothers came along the road. Will you share your food with us, good clown, they asked, for the love of God and the blessings of our brother Francis? Sit down, good fellows, Giovanni said. There's more than enough. As the three men ate, the two little brothers told Giovanni how they went from town to town, begging their food and spreading the love of God. Our founder, Brother Francis, says that everything sings of the glory of God. Why, even your juggling, said one of the brothers. <laughs> That's well and good for men like you, but I only juggle to make people laugh and applaud, Giovanni said. It's the same thing, the brothers said. If you give happiness to people, then you give glory to God as well. If you say so, said Giovanni, laughing. But now I must be off to the next town. Arrivederci, good brothers, and good luck. And wherever Giovanni went, the air was filled with his flying sticks and plates, his clubs and rings and torches, and always his rainbow of balls and the sun in the heavens. And wherever Giovanni went, the faces of the crowds would be all smiles and the sound of laughter and cheers would ring through the towns. Years passed. Giovanni grew old, and times became hard. People no longer stopped to watch. It's only the old clown who juggles things. We've seen him before, they said. Giovanni was sad, but still he juggled until one day he dropped the sun in the heavens. And the rainbow of balls came crashing down, and the crowd stood around him and laughed, but not from joy. Then they did a terrible thing. They threw vegetables and stones at Giovanni so that he had to run for his life. Beside a stream, Giovanni took off his clown face. He put away his sticks and his plates and his clubs, rings, and colored balls. He put away his costume, and he gave up juggling forever. What little money he had was soon gone, and his clothes became rags, and he baked his bread and slept in doorways as he had done as a child. It's time to go home, the old man said wearily, and he headed back to Sorrento. It was a cold winter night when he finally arrived. The wind blew hard and an icy rain was falling. Up ahead loomed the monastery church of the Little Brothers. The windows were in darkness. Wet and cold, old Giovanni crept inside and fell in a heap in the corner. Soon he was asleep. It was the music that woke him up. The church was blazing with candlelight and filled with people singing Gloria, Gloria. Giovanni could scarcely believe his eyes. So much beauty, a long procession of brothers, priests, sisters, and townspeople, all carrying beautiful gifts, was winding its way through the church. They placed their gifts in front of a statue of a lady and her child. What is all this? asked old Giovanni of someone standing near. Why, old man, it's the birthday of the holy child, the woman said. It's the procession of the gifts. Giovanni watched in amazement until the singing was over. Then the church emptied of all the people and was darkened except for the bright candles surrounding the lady and the child. Giovanni moved closer. The child in the lady's arms seemed so serious, so stern. Oh, lady, said Giovanni, 
I wish I had something to offer too. Your child seems so sad, even with all these beautiful gifts. But wait, I used to make people smile. Giovanni opened his bag and shook out his old costume. Then he put on his clown face, bowed, rolled out the little rug, and began to juggle. First the sticks, then the plates. Next he twirled the plates on the sticks, then the clubs and the rings. The brother Sexton, who was coming in to lock the door, saw Giovanni juggling. He was horrified. Father, master, he cried, rushing off to get the priest. A sacrilege, come quickly. But Giovanni didn't notice him. And now, Giovanni, smiling at the face of the child, first the red ball and the orange, next yellow and green, blue and violet. Around and around they went until they looked like a rainbow. And finally, said Giovanni, the sun in the heavens. The gold ball flew up around and around, higher and higher. Giovanni had never juggled so well in all his life. Higher and higher, faster and faster, a blaze of color filled the air. It was magnificent. Giovanni's heart was pounding. For you, sweet child, for you, he cried. And suddenly, his old heart stopped, and Giovanni fell dead to the floor. The priest and Brother Sexton came rushing in. Stooping over old Giovanni, the priest said, Why, the poor old clown is dead. May his soul rest in peace. But the brother, the brother Sexton backed away, and with his mouth wide open, he stared at the statue of the lady and the holy child. Oh, father, he po said, pointing. Oh, father, look. The child was smiling, and in his hands, he held the golden ball.
We offer our gifts to God in response to God's love for us through the checks we send in and the donations we make online to support the mission and ministry of God's church in this place. And we continually offer our lives to God through our simple acts of love and generosity. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pour ourselves out for others in love. May we offer our best gifts to him as we love and serve our neighbors with great joy. Amen. We end our worship today with a Christmas prayer by Robert Louis Stevenson. Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings, and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May each Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children, and the Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven for Jesus' sake. Amen. Go in peace. Go with joy.